This is Vince Russo from Ring of Glory, and you're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com. All right, we have returned once again, and we have, I think this is his fourth time on the show, we have Sean Oliver on the line again from Kayfabe Commentaries. How are you doing? I'm becoming like, I'm feeling like the Beetlejuice role of your show, I think. I'm, I'm, I'm becoming <laughs> a, a in-your-head whack packer, I think. It's <laughs> a good way to look at it. The Get on the Sibian, Sean Oliver. I'm often I'm often compared to a uh, microcephalic black midget, you know. So <laughs> in my daily life, why not have a transcend in your head? We we can't we have to get our own Sibian though. We can't just have spe- people hopping on the Sibian. Yeah, I'd like to ask people to try to do the Pafo. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if we, if most of us wouldn't be able to leave our house and keep jobs if uh-huh. that was the case. I wanted to do a video where where YR would be like a, an inspirational video where through like the powers of YRG I was able to do the Pafo. Mm-hmm. But uh, nice. I don't know if DDP would would he'd probably be plugging that all over the place. But us, <laughs> but uh, speaking of uh, you know, plugging, I don't know. We you got the big I uh, pay per view with uh, Vince Russo. I, I don't know how to go from the Pafo to Vince Russo I pay per view, but live you shoot with Vince Russo. Now I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, you know, we, we we wanted to do one this year. The last U Shoot Live we did was with Dixie, and that was at a time where TNA was, uh, you know, was was being talked about a lot. They had done the Monday night switch, then they went back to Thursday. So we, we said, well, let's get Dixie to come on, and we were thrilled that she would do it and take fans' questions and, you know, press whoever wanted to throw things at her. We have her answer it live on camera. Um, now, fast forward, who do you think would be the most controversial, the most uh, prominent lightning rod in the wrestling business right now? And, and it's, it's, this, it's been the same name for the last 15 years. I mean, how many newsletters, ink, have been spent on this guy's name and websites, on Vince Russo's name. And, you know, he hasn't really been on TV all that much. I I can't think of anybody who has maintained Mm -hmm. this much legit heat without having any kind of uh, TV time. It's remarkable. So we said, this is the guy we need to sit down. This is the only YouTube live we can do right now. And uh, he agreed to come on, and this is the time. It's put up or shut up. Fans, workers, the wrestling press, and, you know, you got to put quotation marks around that because it runs the gamut. <laughs> um, but, but this is the time. If, if you spent a lot of time and you spent a lot of newsletter ink on the guy, Here's your opportunity to send the question, to Twitter the question in while you're watching the iPay-Per-View at uh, www.nlive.com. Uh, if you attend the event, um, this is your time. Ask him the question. Confront him about what you've got a problem about. Mm-hmm. Can I? This is the BBWD. Can I shout out? Jesus. <laughs> if you, if you, if you, call, if you want, call in, just wait, wait to be called on. Don't just call in and just start yelling. Go on, he's sir. Very, he's very <laughs> excited. He's very excited. Let him ask the question. For well, I, ha- I hung up on him, but uh, we could call back right here live on the show. Or well, he could just call back in. It would probably be better. But, but anyway, yeah. that's, mm-hmm. that's, that's my take on it, that this is the opportunity to talk to Vince Russo in the public forum, um, live. And uh, a lot of people have already taken the opportunity based on the fact that I got a script that was 28,000 characters long the other day. <laughs> uh, no joke. And uh, had to edit it down to something we'd be able to finish in a night. But, uh, you know, all the you shoot games will be present, uh, you know, and uh, some new fun, exciting games like uh, Whose Idea Was It? <laughs> um, you know, when we go through some of the shittier things in professional wrestling that he allegedly had a hand in, and, you know, we'll have him give us a name if it was him, and if it wasn't, who was it? Yeah. A lot of fun stuff. Uh, you know, you shoot is like no other shoot interview in the world. Um, people will put out shoots, but it's all minor league until someone does a you shoot because it's in the forum of the fans. The fans ask the questions, and uh, we make the guests answer them. Mm-hmm. 
And I'm not just saying this because we have you on here, but I, I know uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Actually, when we had you on the last time and you mentioned you had like a big guest and actually brought, brought up Rousseau, I didn't know you had him booked and you kind of went a little quiet. But, uh, but I mean, that was the guy I was really looking forward to. <laughs> I think I hey. remember that, actually. Yeah, I do remember that. Uh, uh, Will Lewis, you, this must be a really important question you have. Yeah, man. Hey, Sean, did you interview Virgil? <laughs> did I ever interview Virgil? Yeah. No, I haven't. Well, I heard an interview with Virgil, and that dude, okay, like he was giving a dude a hard time. Who's the dude that gave you the most, the worst time during the interview? Yeah, I know the I know the interview you're talking about. Actually, <laughs> I, I I heard I heard it, or I heard a clip of it, or, and he was really kind of like talking down to the host. I don't remember the company that did it, uh, but he was, every question that was asked of him, he answered in the context of, like, you see, if you were a real interviewer, what you would have said was, and, and it was a shoot. I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't playing a role or anything. Uh -huh. He was offended. <laughs> well, Inter and I have been trying to interview him for seven years uh, at the Fan Fest, and uh, we have not not had <laughs> not had any luck yet. It's a couple minutes, couple dollars. <laughs> if he probably gave us that answer, we'd probably just roll over in laughter. You know, it, it, it's uh, I've seen the photos of him at the uh, conventions. It's not like he doesn't have the time to do the interviews. <laughs> uh -huh. Hey man, you can buy a bunch of them dudes by themselves at them conventions, though. Man, come on now. Yeah, but. Let you know, he's an ass, though, because he probably <laughs> did put his dick out there on the table to get his job. <laughs> Somebody just told us a story. Um, oh, Christ, I'm trying to remember who it was, about how how Virgil worked somebody for, like, $80 in autographs, <laughs> just, like, doing, a, like, a real smooth sell, like, hey, man, what's your name? What's your name? And then writing the name on the picture. And then, <laughs> and, and like, can you stand next to me? You want to take a picture with me? And then, like, the bill was 80 bucks at the end. It was unbelievable. <laughs> we, we've, we've seen this in person, and it was, uh, he's uh, taught to people sign, you know, the book or the photo. Hey, did they get to have the internet oh, today? Yeah. An autograph sorry, I'm it. sorry, Will. you got to go. And he'll, uh... <laughs> And he'll just, you know, he'll sign the name on it, like, to, to Will Lewis. And he's like, well, I put your name on it, so I can't sell it to anybody else, so you got to give me $20, even yeah. though they weren't asking for it. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, quite, the, it's quite the sight to see. Yeah, somebody on, the, on your uh, forum just said Jimmy Dundee was probably the hardest interview. It, 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 was, it, was, it was not the least entertaining to watch, probably, uh -huh. but, but it was the toughest for me to, to, to keep on the, uh, on, on the track. Uh, China wasn't very fun either. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, nobody's ever given me a real hard time. Nobody's ever been very disrespectful. Um, yeah, I think we carry ourselves well, and it's it's usually a good experience for the talent yeah. to do one of our shows. So, yeah, oh, to say from our experience, so sometimes ones that aren't uh, particularly fun for us to do might be fun for people to listen to. That's probably you know kind of what the Jamie Dundee thing is. Well, who, who gave you guys a hard time? Oh, uh, like a hard time, or just wasn't uh, Cole Cabana? Is it really very f fun to interview? But people always <laughs> enjoy it. Uh, who, who's he? Uh, Cole, Cole Cabana, you might know him. I don't know. Oh, uh, I think he was supposed to do a U shoot at one time, and then he canceled. If that's the guy, I'm, I'm yeah. thinking of. I, I forgot his name. You know, he thinks it's for like, uh, you know, do you remember work with, or, you know, I don't know, any kind of question about work and somebody's like, oh, you mean like working with Mc at McDonald's? And the first time it's kind of cute, but like after four or five times, like, yeah, yeah, we get it. <laughs> Just answer the question. question. Well, listen, another one destined for the Hall of Fame someday. So, you yeah, he can be like that. Yeah, but pr actually probably the worst guy we ever interviewed was – um uh, what was it? White trash, Johnny Webb. <laughs> you know what? Somebody just uh, gave me the answer. I was on the Sam Roberts show on Sirius the other day, and that's that's where he told the story. Oh, okay. That's where I heard the story about uh, Virgil working somebody for a <laughs> copious amount of money. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I, I know he he probably I know he was probably right at the top of your you shoot list was to get the white trash Johnny Webb on there. But I'm just, mm. I'm just throwing it out there. I would I try to avoid. You know what? Pirates. Nick Bockwinkle was busy that week, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like doing the live interviews opposed to just recording them? Um, well, the the, the Dixie, you mean for an audience like the YouTube mm. live, the mm. uh, 
the Dixie one was live. We didn't do a live pay-per-view. This is actually our first uh, pay-per-view. We thought Vince Russo was a name worthy enough mm -hmm. um, of bringing it to pay-per-view. Um, and uh, it's it's this Friday night at 8 o'clock. I don't know if I mentioned Excellent. that. but And uh, for those of you maybe listening overseas in England, I know I'm getting a lot of emails um, about the time, because it's going to be 1 a.m. over there. You, if you order it, you are able to watch it as a VOD replay at any point over that weekend. So Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday, um, you know, if you have a big time difference between the U.S. and 8 p.m. Eastern doesn't work for you, then you can um, put it on Saturday morning when you wake up if you order it. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to do it. All right, uh, Vince Russo, two or three questions in. He gets mad and walks out. What do you do? Uh, stop payment on the check. <laughs> um, and, uh, Bill after gets up and does a little karaoke for the rest of the evening. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't see that happening. Uh, nah. I mean, the little interaction we've had with him, he seems like, I always think he seems like a good guy. If you agree, if you like his stuff he writes or not, he seems like a good guy. Vince Russo is very aware of his place in the wrestling world. Um, but I, I, I talked to him a lot before he agreed and before we announced it. And, um, it, it can kind of be an atonement. Perhaps you might say would be one way to look at it. Um, a cleansing, another way, very much. I think, um, a Vince Russo 2.0. I think this issue live is going to kind of push him through the door to the second phase um, of his wrestling career and, and of people's perception of him. Um, it's already kind of happening with all the promos we've shot. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at it, it's like a 50-50 babyface, uh, you know, and negative commentary. A lot of people saying, ah, you know, he's got a good sense of humor about his stuff. And we purposely wrote those to kind of, to be all tongue-in-cheek about what he's done in the past to wrestling. And he was such a good sport about it, I think he babies to face himself, maybe too much to some people. So I, I may have to heal out uh, on the radio here. I don't have to shoot on you, Jack, or something to, to get people to angry yeah. enough to order the eye paper. <laughs> Uh, you know, actually, speaking of uh, being angry about about it, do you, do you think this has uh, permanently ruined your relationship with uh, Jim Cornette? It would seem that way. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. It would seem that way. Based on the emails we exchanged this morning, once again, uh, it would seem that it's headed that way. Mm. Are, are you? Um, I mean, obviously, you, you knew he'd have you know some, something to say about it. But are you surprised that he would you know, get so like take it so personally? Um. I'm a, I was I was surprised that he went public with a statement uh, prior to speaking with me on the phone, which we had agreed to do. Uh, we couldn't get our schedules to mesh, so a couple of terse emails were exchanged. Um, but we had agreed that we owe each other the respect to actually talk before we um, make any big. Uh, big assumptions about this issue live. Mm -hmm. And then I awoke, you know, with the next day to a goddamn statement that was sent out to one of the, you know, the Torch or PW Insider. I don't remember who carried it, but about how not, he not only was expressing his displeasure, but he was calling for a boycott. And I, I thought that was kind of dropping the gloves a little bit. But I still, nonetheless, I... I called him, I, I texted his wife, I said when he gets back from TV, have him call me so this doesn't turn into something ridiculous. But, you know, I forgot who I was talking about. He clearly wants this to be something ridiculous. And uh, so we put out our statement, uh, and he responded. He waited, I guess, a month and responded to that this morning to me. Hmm. Um, so you know, though, I, I, I still like him. Yeah. I, I want to I be really annoyed by him. I can't, though. He he really is exactly off camera as he is on camera. The guy, he doesn't live the gimmick. Like, the gimmick lives him. <laughs> I, have no, I have no doubt that when he loses the remote control in the house, Stacy is subjected to a 10-minute promo being cut on the motherfucking remote control that went down in the fucking couch again. You know, I can only imagine what that soundtrack is like at Castle Cornet. <laughs> uh -huh. 
Uh, that's him. That's him. Now, I know you didn't say you'd be part of it or anything like that, but, uh, you know, when you're thinking about having Rusan, were you hoping that he, he would be part of it in some way, like a send an equestrian or something like that? Um, I, I thought that maybe he said, he said the question to Dixie. Mm-hmm. So I... Which, yeah, it was a lot of fun. You know? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And he, and he I, I, listen, he has spent... I was going to put this in my email thing this morning, but I, I decided to leave it on friendlier terms. I can very easily, just in footage that we own, of him talking about Russo and asking rhetorical questions or, 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 or questions to the air about Russo, I could string together a good 20-minute statement with questions from Cornette and play it that night, and, and it, it would basically be what he would say live anyway. Mm-hmm. Between our you shoot his two you shoots he did for us. The, um, I don't think I don't know. He didn't say much on guest book because they were working together when we shot that. He was still mm-hmm. at DNA. Um, so he was. We know, see him live at you know Fan Fest, and uh, I mean he went on and on about him. Yeah, so I'm just saying the stuff that I own already. Right. To say I will never be a part of that. Well, I'll put that. He can very easily be a part of it. But we're not going to do that. I mean, I respect the guy. The guy doesn't want to be a part of it. That's fine. I just, I just, I don't, I don't really understand the uh, the enmity toward quote unquote anybody that ever gives Vince Russo a time in professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. Let's see, uh, we got a caller five one six area code. Oh yeah, this virtual. This in your head. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's going on? All right. Uh, you, you're on there with uh, Sean Oliver. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan of the uh, his work. I believe his work is you know way beyond our time. This is just I a guy it's... actually named Virgil. I no, thought... no, I was just messing around. Oh. <laughs> this is actually the mannequin from New York. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Sean. I was actually wondering, uh, what are we looking forward to uh, as far as KFIP commentaries, uh, as far as you shoots go? Uh, what should we expect in the future? Well, we're doing, of course, the YouShoot Live this uh, Friday night on iPay-Per-View. That'll also be coming out on DVD on August 7th. And then uh, the series is going to get a bit of a facelift, actually. We're going to be uh, adding some stuff, changing it around. It's going to look a little different, going to sound a little different. It's going to move to the next step. Um, you know, all the imitators are on board now. So, you know, we need to move on and, and, and bring it to the next level. Uh, a couple of new fun segments as opposed to just sitting down at the uh, at the computer. Um, some good stuff. So uh, maybe first quarter of uh, 2013, you should see the first uh, new shoot, as we're calling it, around here. Yeah, that sounds good because I, I totally agree. I mean, all the other shoot interviews I've seen, uh, uh, I mean, fine sign, that's just garbage to me. That's just boring sit-down interviews that everybody gets bored of. Now you see all the stuff you come out with. That's what people want to see nowadays. And uh, I, I seriously think somehow you should bury the hatchet with Conan and get him on doing your shoot. Well, you got to send him. You got to send him the uh, the email. You <laughs> give him a call. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for Where is that's New York. That's up here, right? At uh, Long Island, New York. Yeah, this is the mannequin, uh, Iron Sheik's friend. Okay, I think you did some video for us or something one time, didn't you? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> you sent Good us uh, some video or something. All right. You gonna yeah, be at Legends of the Ring? <laughs> What's that? You gonna be at Legends of the Ring? Oh, New Jersey. Yeah, I'll be there. Oh, excellent. I'll Thank you, you so there. much for your time. Thank you. Take care, Sean. I was hoping it really was Virgil. No. Yeah. Like, why are you all bugging me? No, about he was, he was far too intelligible to be Virgil. <laughs> <laughs> he told me he was going to drop kick me once at one of the fan fests. <laughs> I liked it when uh, Gene is sleeping. <laughs> I'm sure Gene's out there somewhere, but I was walking with my boarding pass for, for the plane, and he looked at me and he was like, Where are you going with that boarding pass? <laughs> I was like, What's what your beef with my boarding pass, Virgil? <laughs> but it was funny. Mm-hmm. Let, me, let me sign that. Let me sign that uh, boarding <laughs> pass for you, there, Virgil. You know. I, I thought we cracked him the last time, and he actually said he's, he said if if uh, Ted DiBiase will do the interview, he would do it with us. <laughs> and I was like, this is so weird, though. Wow. I guess he'd just stand behind. Him. I don't know. <laughs> All right, Ted's ready to do the interview. <laughs> uh, I lied. <laughs> I don't know if we had Ted on, we won't really need Virgil. But, yeah. yeah, really. What the hell's the point? 
boy, did he just make himself irrelevant by saying, if you get on Ted DiBiase, I'll do your interview. <laughs> and I don't know if I ever said this on the, on the show. I don't know if I probably should say it or not. But we were going to have him on one other time, too. And the the woman that was setting it up, who uh, represents uh, some other people we've had on the show, Scott Hall. So he actually sent her a message, and, and she uh, she cleaned it up and said that, that he would do the interview with us if he dated her. And dates were in uh, quotation marks. Uh, <laughs> it's like, wow. Was, you know, the, the, long, the more time you spend in this business, the finer people do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't know what that girl's deal was. Uh, I mean, why didn't she just... <laughs> yeah, she's going to take one for in your head. Yeah, really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mad saying, stop rolling these punches. Ask some hard-hitting questions. We just asked about Cornette. What else does this guy want? I don't know. But someone well, is asking... Why don't you ask? We're, we're, while we're looking at the chat room. You ask the question. Yeah, if he's got something hard-hitting to ask, he can uh, post it in here. Yeah, you said that he that uh, Russo's going to be up for all the uh, all the different things. Did you uh, ask him about that first, and he was cool with it? Well, we actually have we haven't broached that subject yet. <laughs> but I'll post him a little bit. Right. Post him a little, little bit more about it when I when I see him. It's um, always fun live. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, or maybe I just won't mention it. and We'll go after and see what the hell happens. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he doesn't drink, you know, he doesn't do drugs, so there's, there's no chance of getting it in, a, in, a, in an altered state, so then he goes along with the big bag, despite uh, his uh, <laughs> Christian belief. <laughs> was, did you have any questions from the board, Inchman, or the chat room here? Oh, there was one in the chat room, let's see. Well, what was the best-selling new shoot that come from Chef Carl? Um... If you don't want to ask, answer that, what, were there any that you you were surprised? You know, corn, like, corn, 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 you should. Is, is there any that you were surprised, like, uh, you know, you maybe thought uh, wouldn't do so well, but, you know, there was did a lot better than they did? A lot better than you thought they would? Um, you know, I, I kind of, I've learned to leave my, to check my expectations at the door. Um, because you, you never know who, just based on the name, I shouldn't say my expectations. I've learned to check my expectations about the value in someone's name alone being enough to carry a title. Um, like, for example, take the Timeline series. You may, we may have access to somebody who worked near the top of the card for a particular year. But if, they, if they're not compelling or engaging on camera, or storytelling, then the name itself is only going to go so far. Your your trailer and your product is going to be drab. Um, so, you know, you, you, you've, you've got to balance that mix of, of a, a recognizable name and face, but also someone who's, who's highly entertaining. And when you get that mix, it's really potent. Like, uh, we have a, uh, a timeline, WWE timeline, coming out on July 10th. We'll do the year 1995 with Kevin Nash. Now, I think this is a, a dynamite, dynamite edition of the show. Somebody working hard on the card, but also um, doesn't really have any allegiance to anybody, so we'll, we'll tell the story as it was, and uh, a, a compelling storyteller and an entertaining guy to listen to. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that's the magic formula. Uh, Matt has he come up with this hardcore question. He wants to know what drugs of choice have you tried? Have I tried? I guess so. Yeah, that's what he wants to know. Well, I don't know. Not much in my, in my youth. You know, we were all stupid kids at one time. <laughs> um, yeah, there weren't many. Somebody's yeah. asking about Sandman's drug of choice when. Oh, I, I, yeah. I had to ask about yeah. that too. I was watching this, that your uh, you know, the trailer for the the Sandman timeline and. That was some bizarre stuff. Well, like, what was going through your mind when, uh, you know, you found out that his wife was in the car? And did you ever okay, find out the reason? Let's, let's rewind to, to the beginning of that entire day, which okay. I'd like to, to cross off my mental calendar as soon uh-huh. as possible. Um, Eric Sims was the agent uh, in charge of this booking. Uh, Shane Man arrives. With a, a, a very lovely child, uh, I think he's a three-year-old boy, his son, um, to sit down and do, I guess, a three-hour interview, and he, he 
He walks in the door, hands him a box of cereal, and says, all right, sit in the corner, Dad, you got to talk for a little bit. I said, mm. this is not going to go well. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was the plan. That was the extent of the plan. Like, if I had to go do an on-camera gig somewhere, and I had to bring my daughter. I, I, I spent a tremendous amount of time worrying about how to keep her occupied enough so as not to disturb the shoot. The plan was a, a little box of cereal, and there's the corner. Hmm. Eric Sims no, collected, collected the money, waved, said goodbye, was out the door. It, it, so, you know, he did his job, clearly setting up for, for a wonderful afternoon here. Now, the boy was very good, considering it was three hours. But like an hour and a half into this, Shane then says to his son, he says, listen, if you can't be good, I have to send you down out with your mother in the car. And I realized he's got a woman sitting in a car downstairs for this entire thing. And I said to him, I said, do you want to, do you want to have her come in? And he said, he, he's like, she's very ill. She's very ill. Let's keep talking. I was like, all right. So, you know, I continue the interview. Later on, she calls. This was obviously edited out of the show, the final show, which comes out uh, Tuesday. Um, he answers the phone. So he's like, yeah, yeah, not another hour, babe. Another hour, babe. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Hang up. I said, listen. I said, could you please ask her to come up here? He, he's like, no. She's, she's in the car with her wine and her cigarettes doing her homework. Hmm. Very ill. Cigarettes, wine, and homework. <laughs> that was the, that was that, those were the instruments used to paint the portrait of what was going on in that car. <laughs> and that was it. I mean, we worked. He left. I guess everything was fine, and, and that was it. Mm -hmm. Did Did you ever meet her? Or? No, no. <laughs> I'm assuming she existed. Uh, yeah, that's true. Too. <laughs> Uh, was there anything else, uh, any other stories uh, with, during the whole Sandman uh, shoot? You know, the end credit sequence, um, I couldn't let all this footage hit the floor. I cut the end credits uh, intercut with outtakes of all of the reactions he had to things he had no idea happened, which he was involved with. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. I, like all the, all the times he went... Uh, uh, we would say, oh, so-and-so beat, beat you here for the title, and you go, whoa, did that really happen? Like, oh, no. <laughs> it was in the end credits. And he also asked me, now the name of the disc is Timeline ECW 1995. He asked me 14 times what year this was. When he, I say such and such happened. He goes, that happened? Well, what year was that? Uh, <laughs> Still 95 hacks. <laughs> I, I wondered that because uh, I thought myself if I could remember like a whole year and I've done, you know, basically nothing of interest, but I don't know if I'd be able to remember like a whole year or something. You know, and then, you know, these, you know someone like Sandman was uh, doing, you know, uh, some extracurricular activity, so it probably would be hard for him to remember. Um, yeah, Jack, if you were hanging from, uh, you know, a lighting grid doing a leg drop onto, uh -huh. uh, you know, yeah, I probably the, remember that. The, the blue meanie, you might remember it. Uh, <laughs> then, then played some Dungeons and Dragons outside uh, underneath the streetlight. MD since 79, do I frequent hookers? Yes, all the time. Am I married? Yes. Uh, kids, I bring them all. We, we do the whole hooker round <laughs> together. They uh -huh. drop me off. I pick up my daughter and wife outside, and, and we're on our way. Mm -hmm. oh, man. Madman Maple, will there be security if you shoot Russo? Not only will there be security <laughs> if you shoot Russo. That's a good question. The, and I'm not kidding about this. The uh -huh. special features disc that's going to be uh, on the DVD release, which comes out on August 7th, is arranging the security for the <laughs> show. Just the behind-the-scenes footage of <laughs> the security. Uh-huh. I mean, I the, the people that now, obviously, because yeah. it hasn't happened yet. Right, but right, right. Just the lengths we're we're going to and will be going through mm -hmm. is I mean, comical. It, it's funny to to say that, but I mean, there are there are some people that that genuinely like you know hate this man. So <laughs> you have to do it. I'd probably want to storm the stage and be like, "Why'd you make Petey Williams shit his pants? What's the deal with that? <laughs> you have to restrain the incher. <laughs> That's no easy uh, task." I don't know about that one. 
I took you down before at the fan fest. Yeah, I know. A lot of people calling for more Raven discs. Do we really need more <laughs> Raven discs? I was thinking on the, the same thing. <laughs> uh, Dobbs, he was wondering uh, if there was a time limit on the Russo interview. Um, it, 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 it won't. It probably won't go beyond three hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's good though. Uh, three three uh, three three zero area code. Who are you? Uh, yes, sir. I'm a independent uh, professional oh, wrestler. What was your name, Scott. sorry? Yeah, my name is Jonathan. I'm an independent uh, <laughs> professional wrestling content. <laughs> After. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. No, I, I mean, say, you just keep breaking up when you're saying your name. That's all. Oh, hold on, hold on. Well, let me go outside. I got a bad signal in the home. <laughs> oh, we got all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, 330, for Christ's sake, where are you calling from? Young Scott, Ohio. Oh, all right. That's, okay. That's near civilization, yeah. I think. Yeah. Anyway, I just wonder, and I'm a big fan of your product, Sean, and I think it's a great thing you're doing, and uh, as someone who's involved in independent professional wrestling, I was wondering, I enjoy watching the Guest Booker DVD series to gain an insight into the wrestling business and was wondering if there was going to be any more of those in the future. Guest Booker? Absolutely. Um, it, uh, it was the first series we launched with um, to kind of take the shoot interview to the next level. Um and uh yeah, absolutely. We uh we will have more guest bookers to come. The last one we put out was a um was our first ever uh, two guest edition. We did a yesterday and today. We put Kevin Sullivan with Gabe Sapolsky and gave them a common task. If they were both charged with um if they were both hired by Vince to incorporate his new purchase of TNA into the WWE brand, how would they do it? And we we wanted to see how that experiment would go, you know, incorporating the old school sensibilities of, of Sullivan and uh, the use of modern day stuff like the Internet and uh, the YouTube and whatnot for Sapolsky's brand. And I thought it was an interesting addition. I don't know if you have that one, but... Uh, Not yet. I have seen the trailer for it. Uh, that's going to be my next purchase. But, uh, yeah, I have seen the trailer, and I think it's an interesting mix. I know I work in uh, a southern wrestling area out in West Virginia, and they really Ooh. push the old-school style. And uh, it, it's an interesting mix between old-school versus sports entertainment and what you're trying to sell to the customer. So. Yeah, I think I think it can't hurt to, to even if you're working on today's product, it can never hurt to learn your history or at least to appreciate the way things were done before, um, because there's always the best angles today even always have the echoes of what was done years before. Look at the the one angle that popped everybody in the last ten years was the punk thing from last year, mm-hmm. and what what did it? The fact that People were guessing, even if half-heartedly were guessing if it was a shoot. So there's something to trying to still protect an element of kayfabe, even though I'm one of the biggest contributors to shattering kayfabe. Um, there's still value in it. And a lot of schools actually order that series, like wrestling schools I know um, order everyone. And I've, I've talked to trainers like Les Thatcher who says when people come to him and talk to him about working creative and if he had any advice for booking, he always turns them on to that series, which is a great compliment uh, to us. Now, have you ever thought about trying to get Les Thatcher to sit down and do a DVD? Yeah, I've talked to Les a lot. I want it to happen. It's always been a scheduling thing. We came close uh, about two years ago, and uh, hopefully it'll happen. The man can really talk. Absolutely. Yeah, he's great. He's mm-hmm. great. He's so damn smart. He, he's great. Well, thank you for your time, gentlemen. Thanks for calling thank in. Thank you. No let's see here. On uh, Facebook, uh, let's see, uh, Anthony wants to know, will you ever do a you shoot with Batista so everybody can shut the F up finally about the size of his penis? Well, he... Um, his penis isn't under contract, so we're actually <laughs> going to have that as the next guest. Oh, man. That's he's going to be laying on the floor beneath the table, and he's going to throw up on, uh, he's going to drape it across the laptop. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll interview that for, uh-huh. for hours. That'd be a whole whole new series. Yes. Him, Alex Wright, uh, Virgil, all, all the Mike all the big Hoffa, names. We, we right. Colonel Rob Parker. Uh, do you do you ever get sick of people asking the Batista question? No, it's kind of become a thing. You know, it's like kind of become a. Uh, I don't want to say catchphrase, but they're like a ceremonial thing. It's, I guess it's kind of like playing rock and roll all night, ending the show with rock and roll all night. You get to the tease the question in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, yep. always fun to, it's always fun to get the talent's reaction to that question. Somebody did a little cartoon about it, actually. I don't know where you can find it. I think it's on our our Facebook page. Uh, we are, what are we on Facebook? KFA Talent Paris, I guess. Um, and uh, somebody did a little animation of, uh, uh, they used the real audio from all of the, occurrences of the Batista's dick question on U-Shoots and did a um, <laughs> did a little graphical representation of, of me asking the question to the town. Very cute. <laughs> uh, Elvis wants to know, uh, which was the most fun to do? I know you said um, the best ones, it's the hardest, but which was just like the most fun for you to you know, actually uh, do the interview? Um... I don't know. And they're all kind of fun. There are the few that, that it gets to be tedious. There's a lot of questions. I think uh, Waltman was great. I thought his was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. He got it. You know, he rolled with it. I'm going to be working with him again uh, tomorrow night, actually. Um, but uh, so I thought his was was great. It was a lot of fun. Danny Doring was a lot of fun. Um I gotta say the Danny Doring one to me, um, and it's it was nothing because he's actually fun when I'm on the show. But that was uh, the most uh, surprising one to me, like uh, that I had the most fun watching. That that I wasn't uh, necessarily going into thinking, you know, this is going to be like the, the greatest uh, you shoot or something. You know what I'm saying? Right, well, but that's there again. You can't mm-hmm. just jam, judge exactly. the name count. That the magic of you shoot. Like so let let's take Tony Atlas for example. Uh. Uh-huh. If I said I was going to talk to you, I talked to Tony Atlas for two and a half hours on camera. I bet you didn't think I was going to talk about women walking on his face for a half hour, did you? Uh, no. You, you never know what's going to come out on you. Uh, you didn't think he'd, he'd open a life-size cutout of China, did you? Uh, no. <laughs> and something he you brought up is, has become a part of uh, of In Your Head. I mean, I talk about it all the time here on the show is uh, the Bella Twins. Oh, the Bella Twins. Right. And I don't even ask if it's true or not. I just, you know, <laughs> take it as, as reality. I mean, you know. Jack yeah, what, that did that's say, what did he say? Uh, he said that they like to, you know, uh, they like to, to pee and poop on people. Yeah, yeah. I've wondered now, it, is one is one the peer and one the pooper? Or do they... Right, or is, it, it, or is it tag team? Are they doing it properly? Is someone getting tagged in to do their gimmick and then they go out, the next one hops in, and exactly. what are they... It was like behind the rest back. They just both dropped trial, and I don't know. Uh, Intra's always trying to get me to say uh, allegedly, but I I think you can believe Tony Atlas. He's not going to lie about something like that. (laughs) I don't see how Tony Atlas would know, though. (laughs) Who who better to know is what I want to (laughs) know. Did he hear this from somebody? There's a lot we don't know about uh, (laughs) Tony Atlas yet. (laughs) Tony Atlas is awesome. It was a lot of fun when we uh, we met Tony Ellis uh, several times, and he uh, kind of I always think he kind of puts on the uh, the uh, kind of uh, not so smart uh, persona. Because then uh, when we met him one time, and he was like, he just pulled out his itinerary and started talking to us like uh, completely different. But I think yeah, he knows well, that that really gets him over. He's a good guy. He's a nice guy. Yeah, he is. He's one- Someone asked about Sid no showing us. Yeah, that happened. Uh, he was supposed to be a guest on the new series, Breaking Kayfabe. Mm-hmm. It's going to be launching in June, um, which is what Waltman's going to be doing with us tomorrow. We do have a New Jack one, which is going to surprise a lot of people. Uh-huh. I mean, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of New Jack stuff out there, but nothing like this. Yeah. The series in, 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 in itself is going to... Uh, it's going to surprise a lot of people. But, um, yeah, so Sid was supposed to come on, and kind of the prerequisite for that series for Breaking Cave is, is wrestlers with interesting lives. The premise of that show is, is getting behind the character and behind the gimmick and talking to the person. 
So, you know, we look for the people in the business that, in addition to what they've done in the ring, have a very interesting life. And Sid is somebody with stabbings and arrests and whatnot. It certainly fits that bill. And you know what? M- me and five million other promoters were fucked by Sid. So, you know what? We we knew better to outlay any cash. You know, we're not advancing him anything. And if he showed up, he got a payday. He, I guess, had a you know had a, a better offer out there than uh, whatever he was flying in from. Hmm. That's too bad. I know he's uh, no showed a lot of people. We've always had a uh, uh, good experiences with uh, Sid. Uh, New Jack, too. I know some people are not a fan of New Jack, but he's always good with us. New Jack is always okay with us. He, he, uh, his behavior at the Terry Funk roast was, was a little yeah. edgy, to say uh, the least. We cut out a lot of his uh, shenanigans, but mm-hmm. um, but we talk about that on Breaking k uh, The first thing I address is I, I say to him, I said, um, I've worked with you a lot. And it's always been fine until you were drinking and, you know, kind of cooking through that entire uh, thing. That, that, that's some life, boy, when you hear that story. He was being carried out of the house as a child by his mother while his father was shooting his mother in the back. And he's watching her white nurse's apron turn red. Mm. I mean, the things that this guy saw as a kid um, give you some insight into the Jerome Young that we started to see in the form of New Jack. It's an interesting series, Breaking Cave. And again, I think it's going to move the shoot interview into a whole new direction. And then all the other shoot companies will be on board, and eventually WWE will be on board, and we'll move on to something else. <laughs> uh, Sean Waltman actually holds the record here for the most F-bombs ever in an interview. I believe that. He holds a record on the You Shoot series also for the uh, rolling competition. <laughs> for the what? The rolling competition. Mm. The cigarette ro- rolling oh, okay, great. Right. Yes, yes. <laughs> I've seen uh, other uh, shoot interviews which uh, have uh, uh, less uh, quality editing, where, the, where he actually says, edit this out of the thing, and they're like, no problem. And it's all right there. On the, uh... Right. I was going to say, you mean there's any editing at all? <laughs> uh, don't worry, we'll edit this out when you're ordering a pizza. And it's all right That's there. On the... <laughs> uh, I'm J- waiting to ask a question. <laughs> I hear. Yeah, James, you have a question for Sean Oliver. <laughs> Is James breathing? James, speak up, my lad. Jimmy Jam. Hey, Jackie Jones. <laughs> How you doing, James? You got a question for Sean Oliver? No. <laughs> well, I have Goodness, nothing James. to say to you either, James. <laughs> Thanks for calling in, James. Call back later on. You're good. You're good. All right. This uh, is the first interview I've ever drank a bottle of whiskey during. It's probably... <laughs> Intr- it was what, a- what, what kind? It's what fire. Brand? Brand. Fireball whiskey, very high quality brand. I was going to say, you go for the top shelf, I guess. (laughs) Yes, it's like drinking uh, liquid fireballs if you ever had the candy. Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's quite good, actually. It's really smooth, which is probably not good. But, Intro, did you have another question? Doc Gonzo, he wants to know any plans on doing anything with Scott Hall, maybe a U shoot or something. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, I mean, we had a lot of plans for Scott Hall, but ultimately we we had to cancel, as did a lot of people, I think. <laughs> uh-huh. And um, we had some good stuff. And uh, we actually, we ran into one problem where he was banned from every single resort in this corporations chain. So, you know, you'll have a, you know, a, a particular hotel brand and they'll own, you know, 10 smaller chains and we couldn't get, it was for a live event. We wanted him to be involved and they wouldn't allow us to use band based on his, his behavior at the Iron Sheik roast mm-hmm. um, when he attacked the comics. Um, but, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, it'd be nice for uh, for Scott Hall to come out the other side of the tunnel and be able to uh, be able to do stuff again. But I don't think he's a bankable commodity. I'm certainly not going to uh, tell my guys to reserve a night uh, in their lives to work and then have to cancel it. Mm-hmm. It's too bad. Uh, you know, we've had him on a few times, and um, even just having him on on the show, it's kind of a a hassle to to get him on, like where you can actually do the interview. But um, like uh, when you talk to him, uh, when he's in a proper straight state of mind, it's a really nice guy. It's just too bad. Yeah, some I, I I I guess that could be the case. I I haven't met that Scott Hall ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I met uh, the other one. Right. Um, let's see. Thomas Shaw wants to know if you were stranded on an island with just one wrestling book. Whose would it be and why? Oh, excellent question. Um, just one, right? Okay, just one. Um, Mick Foley's first one. Mm, That's my favorite one, too. I yeah. remember like being so excited for it. It was hard to even get. It was uh, it was it was told in such an authentic voice. I mean, you can mm-hmm. tell that there was no ghost. I mean, he makes a point to mention that he didn't use a uh, uh, another writer or anything, mm-hmm. but it, it it was so uniquely in his voice. Um, it was sizable, um, and uh, it was it was a good mixture of fact, his story, which is interesting in and of itself, and then his his humor. Mm-hmm. His brand of humor. It was a really well written book. Beyond wrestling, it's it, it's a very well written memoir. Yeah. A close second might be um, Bret Hart's, mm-hmm. be- just because. Uh, I mean, I I think Bret's a bit of a load with you know, with his. He takes himself a bit too seriously, I think. But um, but I think that book was so well written. It was, it was brutally honest. Just the mm-hmm. things he goes through about his family and, and his marriage. It really was. What a memoir should be, which is a real bearing of the soul, and his story in the business and growing up in that family is fascinating. So I would say Brett's is a close second. Mm-hmm. I agree, though. You, um, when you read the ones that are written by the guy, like you, you can just tell right away that it's in their own words, and that really adds something to the book. Yeah, and then, I mean, there are a lot of wrestling books that are basically pamphlets with a cover that get put out. They're very, mm-hmm. very cursory broad descriptions of events um, in the person's life and almost some like you like you're reading like a Wikipedia page about them. yeah it's precisely a collection of fact instead of any kind of humanity I want to hear the person mm-hmm. um, and you definitely did in mix uh, first book yeah and what you said it was a long too because I know um I quite enjoyed the Larry Zabisco one because it, it was pretty funny too but it was so short like he just flew right through it it was so short, but it, but I mean, it was again, it was very much in Larry's voice, but yeah. it was way too short. I just mm-hmm. thought I, Larry's coming out uh, to work with me on Saturday. We're doing a timeline 1980, so we're going to go through the whole Bruno thing and start to finish. Oh, I'm looking yeah, forward to that one. He's always one of my favorite great. people. Larry's the best somebody's, somebody's, somebody's tirelessly trying to get me to address the enhancement talent. Uh-huh. Uh, you shoot series. We we had an idea a while ago for like an enhancement enhancement round table but I hate the, I hate the round table idea it's, I think it's just an excuse to throw a bunch of people together with seemingly no connection mm-hmm. you know what they all do all work at the bottom of the card so, you know, so, so they're going to share a table so we ultimately decided against it um, but I would like to I would like to talk to enhancement talent I don't know what form it would be I don't know if it would be a you shoot um but uh, yeah, I, w- I would like to get the first-hand account of the life of an enhancement talent. I try to every once in a while when I can sneak it into a, a timeline or a, or a guest booker. Yeah. But um, is there any? Yeah. Have, have you talked to any of these guys where they're? Is it is it uh, awkward to bring up like how you want to go about it, like call them an enhancement talent or you know, what to call them? I've I've asked a couple of people. I said, "Well, what is the proper uh, term? Are they enhancement talent? Are they?" Um, to, and most of the guys that respond say, "No, jobbers." <laughs> right. But are those from the enhancement uh, talent themselves or other people? 
No, this is other people talking about yeah, them. Yeah. I, I don't know if uh, Johnny Rouse would appreciate being called a jobber. Yeah, yeah. I remember it was uh, years ago in Get in the Ring, the old show uh, intro and I used to listen to, that's how we met, was uh, they had um, S.D. Jones on, and they actually brought up job, and it really offended him. Yeah, I could see that. I mean... Especially that, because a lot of those guys... They were actually, uh, you know, fairly big wrestlers in other territories, and then just used as enhancement talent in, you know, the WWF. But specific to someone like St. Jones, I mean, the guy worked. Maybe he was a jobber, but the guy worked. Look, I, I want to say, certainly from the early eighties, eighty two, eighty three, through. I mean, they even gave him like this baby push at one time yeah, when they yeah, an the action Hawaii figure, shirt. yeah. And what was that like? The late eighties, maybe. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, even those, you know, those guys uh, back then, like when you watch those house shows, like it wasn't just like they were in like a two minute squash match. I mean, they would get like like a fifteen twenty minute match, like a lot of times on the opening card. Yeah, yeah. So someone like SD, I could see maybe wanting to be put in a different class of like a sub. I mean, if we're talking about jobbers in general, but maybe there's a subclass. Maybe there's the the Mario Mancini and the Rusty Brooks class that, you know, would just do 30 seconds on the weekly TVs. And then there was uh, S.D. Jones. I did ask S.D. Jones one time, by the way, Salvatore asks on the uh, forum here, about the hole in his back, and he had an operation when he was a kid. So that is the answer to that. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, Thomas also wants to know, uh, who would you prefer to interview, Hologram Eddie Guerrero or Zombie Chris Benoit? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> um, it would be really hard, despite the money that would be made, to get me to do anything with Chris Benoit as yeah. a parent and as a human being. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, it's 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 great that he was an entertainer and he entertained people for a few years there. But, you know, when you do something with the gravity of what he did, it really does replace any smaller contribution you made to the world prior to that. And it does, in essence, erase your identity as whatever you were, whether you were a wrestler. Um, you know, I hear Charles Manson was a great musician, but nobody's ever going to remember that or know that because um, he effectively erased that. So I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take Eddie. Yeah, are you are you surprised by uh, how many people have the uh, have a different view on that? Like, I'll read YouTube comments or Facebook comments, even on Facebook, and there's so many people that are just like pro Benoit. So uh... no, listen, there's there's assholes all over the world. I encounter <laughs> oh. I encounter them every every five miles when I'm on the turnpike. So there's many more in the world. And the internet has given a forum to all, so you know you have to sit through these. Yeah, <laughs> uh, no, I'm sure you're familiar with. It. Especially if you, do you read all the uh, YouTube comments? Because I notice YouTube especially has some of the dumbest comments I've ever read. I I don't really. Um, you probably I mean, I have probably stay sane that way. If I'm directed to one, I, I may go look at it. But uh, I don't know if if they're all serious or what. But, <laughs> <laughs> that probably shouldn't be attacking the YouTube community, but we got Rumple Foreskin on the line. Hey, how we doing tonight, gentlemen? Pretty good. Um, are you, are you Sean, a worker just, with that name, and do you wear a hood? That's my question. <laughs> I don't wear a hood, I don't have foreskin, and I'm not a worker. You have no foreskin? All right. All right. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time anyway. I've ever asked that question on the show. <laughs> I've had the question asked a lot, ironically. Um, Sean, I just want to say I really love your You Shoot series. I love everything you're doing for the uh, You Shoot style of interview. But I wanted to get your, uh, I wanted to ask a question about a debate we've been having here on the radio. Is what do you like better, <laughs> the big blue cage or the mesh cage? Mesh cage, baby. The big blue oh. thing's an insult. Yeah. Oh, my God. I can't believe oh. you, Oliver. You come on my program and you diss the big blue cage. Uh, that's an insult. What, what, what is the what is the genesis of this? We've been debating this for years on the show. I'm a man that's behind the original. Ori- I don't even call it the, like different. Ca- it's the original. Mm. It's a, it's it's the steel cage that I think of. And interest supports the big blue. You like and your a, stupid like fence. 
That's all it is. Vince. If you think of the original cage, you think like gritty, hardcore wrestling. You got two animals in there. It's to keep them in, to keep other people out. They're going to be uh, you know, ripping their flesh apart. They're going to be fighting it out. Two men. The big blue cage to me, that's like uh, Hollywood. It's 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 bright. It's cartoony. It's like showmanship. Big Jack. guys can walk out of. We're talking Plus, evil, Knievel, idea. baby. Plus the whole idea that you try to escape. You can see a fence in your backyard, Jack. If I wanted, if you're gonna, if you were fighting somebody you hated, you wouldn't want to run away. You'd want to fight it out till the other person. That's the stipulation. Yeah. We're talking it's about nice, the, whole the, thing, the object. The whole, thing, the whole thing. No, I don't think. Right, go back to your neutral corners, please. <laughs> God, see, every cool. time I every time I ask this question, I always start a war. The reason we saw the blue cage at all was because Bundy's feet would not be able to ascend the fence. Mm-hmm. So WrestleMania three, they built this ridiculous thing, which was the the, the the first incarnation of the big blue cage. Now the cage that Jack is talking about, it's kind of reminiscent of maybe a dog fight, or or or, or in someone I don't know, I mean I guess it was Intro that was yelling on the phone there, who mm-hmm. you know to see a fence in your backyard, but that's exactly the point. Maybe it's it's got a little bit of that gritty kind of backyard brawl kind of element to it. Anytime I it see was, a fence like that, Oliver, it's got a poodle behind it yapping away. It's that don't like, scare me. It's actually kind of like what we were talking about before when we went um, live, when we were talking about the remakes. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original, that is original fence. Nah. A remake of that, all glossy and shiny, that is the Big Blue Cage. Oh, hell, King Kong Bundy for creating the Big Blue Cage! <laughs> There's a reason they don't use it anymore. Ah, King Kong, you don't, you, don't you talk crap about Bundy. I like Bundy. I want, them to bring, I want them to bring back the old chicken wire cage, is right Yes, that's exactly what I want. You have to want wrestling all glossy and, and pretty. It's, you know, hardcore well, pretty guys just beating each other up, bleeding. That's what I like. Well, what if they switched it to the black cage like they did at St. Valentine's Day Massacre? Still, it's the idea, like uh, Sean was saying, it's almost like a fence. I mean, like a ladder where they can but climb it would, out. It would make it a lot easier for some the, of the bigger The black does take away a little bit of the, the blueness from it because a big blue kind of looks like a big uh, blue bouncy house like you'd see outside McDonald's for the oh, little kids give again. Me a break. So if you if you paint it black, it takes away some of it. But still, I like the old, just an old school, straight up mesh cage. That's what I want to see. Exactly. All right. All right, thank you, friends, for my phone call, Sean. No I'm problem. Glad you like coming from you guys in the future. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Tigger. Thanks, Rumpel. All right, Sean. Well, we want to thank you for coming on. It's almost <laughs> well, I want to thank you for having me. I always have a good time with you guys. We always have a good time with you on, too. Oh, that's a little, little love fest going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A little three-way bromance here. I can't wait to see what happens with this Vince Russo shoot. Sounds sounds like great stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, you know where to be. Friday night, uh, this Friday, 8 o'clock, um, you can get it on iPay-Per-View at www.nlive.com or just go to youshootlive.com. We'll redirect you there. Um, if you're in the area, I think there are still some ticket packages left. If you're in the tri-state area here, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, uh, come out and make it live. It's going to be one to remember. I am looking forward to it myself, not just because you're on here, but uh, – I think it's going to be pretty epic. Um, and I, I, he must be aware that there's going to be a lot of uh, negativity towards him. Yeah, I think he's aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> He'll figure it out when you bring up uh, the drug you know bag. What, you know what, Silver? You know what, though? I, I, I think a lot of people think it's just going to be... A, 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 just like a, a burial of the guy? Yeah. A, just a burial. And, you know, that's kind of pointless. I mean, how many times can you tell someone to go fuck themselves? Mm-hmm. Um People really sent, even if even if the, the context of their question was, you're an asshole, <laughs> they really sent some pretty interesting questions. Like, the reasons they cite for him being an asshole, perhaps, w- w- are worth exploring, I think. And, and I'm very, very anxious to hear his answers to this. And, and Jack, there's a segment on this show. Um, it's a game, and it harkens back 
to his his career as a video store owner. Mm -hmm. And you in particular are going to appreciate this game. That's all I'm going to tell you. Hmm. I'm really looking forward to this. Oh, it's going to be great. We're going to see how many... uh, Well, I won't spoil it. We'll see. You tune in and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about when we get to the the, uh, VCR tape uh, Uh cover game. I'm just going to throw this out here. To me, the perfect movie... If you're going to watch... There's lots of movies you can watch and kind of make a wrestling angle or whatever. But the perfect movie to watch... I think that really captures what wrestling should be about is definitely Rocky. Can't go wrong with Rocky. That is what. Yeah. I thought it's you just were going the to say idea. the passion. The pa- No, the passion. The passion of Christ. Yeah. No, if the passion of Christ, that's just like a just like a three hour like garbage match. It's just like nonstop, just like eye spots and and bleeding. Hmm. I've never it's seen not, that. It's not, it's not a good story. It's not. It's not a well-told story. I mean, it's a well-made movie, but it's just kind of like it's almost like watching like a three-hour snuff film. Did I just offend you, Incher? <laughs> I've never seen The Passion. Oh, I was God. just trying to make a goofy joke, and then you went into that whole thing. Oh, well, I'm I'm sorry. But anyway, kfavecommentaries dot com, youshootlive dot com. If you're at the Legends of the Ring. Or if you're thinking about going, I mean, there's another reason to go. There's going to be all kinds of people there. I know uh, we talked to Stevie Richards early. He's going to be there. I believe, like, the whole BWO is going to be there. And then you're going to have a live U shoot there. I mean, you can order it. If you're not going to be there, order it on, on at home on the iPay-Per-View. But if you're there, it's going to be so much better to watch it live. This is going to be quite a weekend. People are flying in from all over. The Warriors going to be there, for Christ's sake. Yeah, I forgot about that. Actually, actually on my Facebook um, I think named uh, Brandon Levitra. He actually, and I wish I would have known this about earlier. He actually said him and his buddy are driving there. He lives in New Bedford. He would have came and picked me up, took me along with him. If I would have known about it earlier, I definitely would have been there. Legends of the Ring. Yeah. Pretty awesome. There you go. Thanks, Sean. You're a good man. Thank you, gentlemen. Take care. Yo, this is New Jack, the original gangster, and right now you're listening to In Your Head Online dot com. Believe it. If you don't, I'll stab your ass. <laughs> <laughs>